let's make sure people understand what the difference is between a fast and a slow twitch fiber. Let's yep. and we'll come I want to come so, right back to where we are, but I just want to make sure we haven't lost that thread. Yeah, in general, there's a lot of ways to describe it, but um, the, the easiest way is to describe it by the name. So fast twitch means that the twitch or the speed of contraction is higher. And so those these fibers can contract and, and squeeze together with through the mechanisms we haven't got to yet. We'll get there. Uh, myosin actin um, at a much faster rate. Having said that, the fast twitch fibers tend to be larger, though not always, and certainly not in endurance training individuals, um, and definitely not with aging. Um, that they tend to be almost they almost always are more glycolytically driven, and so they're going to have more of the enzymes responsible for anaerobic glycolysis. Um, they're going to have more glucose in the cell. Um, they're going to have less intramuscular triglycerides, and they're going to be having, they generally have more phosphocreatine. Slow twitch fibers are fatigue resistant, which means these are the ones that they can contract kind of all day long because they don't use as much glucose, so they do use quite a bit still. They are much better at using fat as a fuel. They are, uh, they tend to have more and larger mitochondria. And the, the downside is they don't contract with as much velocity uh, in general. So that's the, the functional, that's why we call them twitch. And, and just to be clear, the force difference between them is, it doesn't matter. It's just velocity or is there a force difference as well? So the, yeah, no, well, so a couple of things. Um, in, in large part, force production from muscle fibers is determined mostly by size cross-sectional area. So getting the fiber bigger is the play to get it faster. Having said that, power is markedly different. And so if you're talking because about- Because power is based on velocity as well. That's, yeah. The times, the multiply the force um, by the velocity. So if you use this metric that we'll use in single fiber experiments um, called specific tension, which is sort of like relative strength. So you, you take the size portion out of the equation. Um, what you're gonna see is a true slow twitch. So these are also called type one fibers. Um, if you compare those to a type 2A, so that's a fast twitch muscle fiber, um, you're going to see something like five to six X power between these two. So it's not when a you small normalize amount. for size. Yeah. When you normalize for cross section. If you go, if you go to the 2X fibers, which is a special class of fast twitch fibers, now you're talking 20X that power curve. And that is mostly explained by more metabolic apparatus what's enabling nope. the speed why does the 2x fiber go faster yeah it's all has to in fact the way that we differentiate muscle fibers in the laboratory is we measure what's called the myosin heavy chain and so if to, to kind of actually come back to microanatomy here so the way the muscle fibers work is this is all in a, a 3D sequence, right? So you can imagine that cylinder. I'm gonna explain it to you in 2D, just so you understand, but this is actually occurring in 3D. And so what happens is you've got two of these microfilaments called actin and myosin. All right, now what happens is they're overlapped, so they're not touching each other. And you've got myosin um, kind of laying in the middle and it's this big, thick tube. And it's got these heads that flick off the top of it, All right? Now these heads reach up and they extend again in 3D, but if you just think about it in 2D, they reach up and grab on what's called actin, all right? And so the idea when you contract the muscle is the myosin will reach up and they're gonna reach out sort of outward. So if you're watching this video, you're seeing my hands kind of reach up and away from my body. Like I'm stretching my arms, like I'm doing a big T, if you will. And my hands would then grab onto the actin. And then if I were to squeeze my hands and bring my hands closer to my face, that's the myosin is actually then pulling the actin closer together. So what actually happens in real life is those start stacking on top of each other. And that's why when you squeeze your bicep, it actually glows larger vertically because those muscle fibers are stacking on top of each other and that's actually elevating in size. And so what determines force production versus velocity is what we call cross bridges. So the amount of time that these myosin heads grab onto actin, that little place of connection is called a cross bridge. The more those cross bridges you have, the more effectively you can pull the actin closer to each other. The, the more effectively you do that, the faster the contraction, the more forceful the contraction is going to be. So primary thing explaining force production is the amount of cross bridges. So the thicker your myosin, the more likely you are to grab actin 
the faster, the stronger the hold, if you will. So the better connection your hand has to that thing it's grabbing onto, rather than you can imagine like a couple of fingertips on it and trying to pull something closer to you versus having your whole hand wrapped around it, a strap on it, chalk on it, and like you're gonna be able to rip that thing down quickly. Now there are six actin that surround in a circle each myosin in human skeletal muscle. And so again, picture that 3D structure. So you can imagine if I'm standing up in a room and I'm myosin and six people are forming a circle around me, like they're gonna jump me or celebrate me or whatever. That's what it looks like. And my arms can sort of reach out and no matter where my arms are, there's gonna be somebody that I can grab. And you only have two arms still in this? You only have two myosin filaments? You have a ton. Okay, okay. You, uh, so you have one myosin filament. I'm sorry, you only have um, t uh, two heads or how many heads do you have? Bajillions. Okay, so you have billions of heads to grab onto six potential targets. So you're always gonna yeah. grab a target. You're, you're gonna grab one, right? Now you can't increase the amount of those actin that are around you, but we do see that in other animals. So this is one of the reasons that explains why like fruit flies, spiders and things like that can contract with so much more force relative to humans is they might have eight or 10 or 12 or 20 mice or actin per mice. Mm. And ants, which we always think of as like for their size being insanely strong. Totally. They'll do that. So, so evolution's tool to make things stronger is give more actin because you already have an infinite number of myosin heads, the more things I can give you to grab onto, the stronger you are. The stronger you're gonna be, yeah. You, you so realize there's if, somebody out there using CRISPR right now trying to figure out how to double the number of these things in humans, right? So I'm not gonna say this officially. All I'm gonna say is, well, officially, the world knows about the bear muscle studies that we've worked on. So there have been bear tissue come through and under my microscope, put it that way. Um, bear tissue is actually quite unique. So they actually have a, so humans have that 2A and they have that 2X. Which is, for, is formerly 2B, right? Incorrectly identified as 2B. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Most other animals do actually have, in fact, 2B. And the 2B is even faster than the 2X. And bears have a lot of them. So this is one of the other reasons why not only do you have that, they simply have a simple a, a fiber type that is much faster than any of the fastest ones we have. Uh, cheetahs yeah. and um, other cats like that have, have like 20 to 60% of these two B fibers. It's extraordinarily high amounts. Of and they, and, 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 those. and in those, do they have more actin targets? I think actually, I think cats are, are pretty close to six to one, uh -huh. uh, but I, we could, fact check that one but I'm, I'm pretty sure that part of it's yeah. fairly it, it tends to be fairly similar on similar kind of mammal mammals it's when you get to the insects and things like that i think where that number jumps off but my comparative physiology is not the sharpest so don't trust me there so um yeah th that's a great description of the micro anatomy and i want to remember yeah. so let, let me finish the speed thing oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so what determines the speed so on those little myosin, there, where it kind of connects to the actin, it's called the myosin head, okay? Now, a part of that is a bunch of stuff that you guys don't need to know about, but a part of that is, is called the heavy chain. So there's a light chain portion and a heavy chain. All right, now on the tip there, the way that we can get a muscle to contract is ATP. So what happens is the myosin are kind of loosely connected to the actin at all times. But in order for it to grab and pull, you need a strong connection. And for that connection to happen, and for that to be able to pull it together, it requires energy. So pardon the, the somewhat crude analogy, but the way that it kind of works is if you imagine cocking a pistol. So in order to actually cock the pistol versus fire the, the trigger, the squeezing the trigger actually produces, it takes a lot less energy than cocking it back. If you've ever cocked a thing, like they actually, you have to pull pretty hard. So the energy that we need actually for muscle contraction is not the pulling together. That's actually almost passive. It is the cocking back part that takes energy, right? And so that energy comes from ATP. So on the little tip of that myosin head is an enzyme called ATPase. As you know, you hear ACE, you think kinase, like you think like something, the enzyme that's gonna work. That's the molecule that hydrolyzes ATP. Uh, splits ATP rather, right? So um, to make that simple. So what you have to do is actually invest in ATP 
that gives you energy. Use that energy to cock that myosin back into place. And now it's kind of sitting there, but it can't bind strongly until calcium comes into the picture and gets released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That has to come to the equation. It has to cause this conformational change in actin and move these T tubules, or that comes from T tubules and move some other things around. Once those things get moved around by the calcium, then the myosin is like, oh, boom, it connects something. And then it just almost subconsciously snaps as hard as it possibly can. And that's why you can't regulate force production. It's like, it's just going to catch and snap, catch and snap. In order for that to go back, you actually have to invest more in ATP. This is also, side note, what explains rigor mortis. So this happens, it gets contracted. You don't have the energy to then pull it back in. So then you stay in this locked sort of skeletal muscle contraction position. So now the speed at which you can do that, that ATPase thing, that's what determines single muscle fiber contractile speed. That's also that myosin heavy chain is what we measure in the lab. And that's how we determine fast switch versus slow twitch. So if you were to use a technique we use called gel electrophoresis, basically you put a gel between two pieces of glass and you just pour gel in there and it gets like solidified, just like hair gel, like a little bit thicker. And then you put each individual muscle fiber in its own vertical lane. And then you put a little bit of positive charge on the top end, a little bit of negative charge in the bottom end or inverse, it doesn't matter. And then you actually put a little bit of chemical bath around the muscle fiber that has a charge. You turn the electricity on, positive goes to negative, et cetera. And so those fibers run down vertically through the gel. We hit stop at a certain time point and the smaller ones have gone further because smaller molecular area will go through the gel faster. And so we stop, basically we put it, we develop it like you would develop a picture, like, like old school photography stuff, literally the same silver nitrate, et cetera, that you use. And we can see the ones that have gone further down are slow twitch, the ones that want to stay up higher are fast switch. And of course we use molecular weight markers to, to confirm all that, but that's effectively what we're looking at. So what that means is the myosin heavy chain molecular weight determines fiber type and that regulates it's twitch ability. The, the more of those and the faster those heavy chains work, the faster ATPase can operate, the faster the whole thing can contract, the faster the muscle fiber contracts, and there you go. And that's why muscle fiber type is not predicated on size. It is specific to either metabolic abilities in the old days or now more specifically twitch velocity. <laughs>